Good afternoon and welcome back everybody to another edition of the BH virtual event space. We're talking data storage, storage strategies for video production and photography teams. Very happy to welcome to the event space Murray Weiss and Chris Fry. Gentlemen, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, absolute pleasure. I uh, want to give a huge thanks to Synology for sponsoring this event. Thank you very much to them for setting this up. Uh, just a few things to go over before we get started and we dive into this. Uh, as you all know already, questions are welcome. So make sure you get any questions you have about storage, NAS, all of that good stuff in so that we can get them answered. If you're joining us here on Zoom, you can use the Q&A tab. If you're joining us on Facebook or Vimeo, you can use the comment section. I'm going to step aside because nobody came here to see me and hand it over to Chris and Murray. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. All right. Thanks, Scott. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Chris Fry. I'm a senior business development specialist here at Synology, which uh, basically means my, my role is I work on a team here that uh, assists our end users in the media and entertainment industry. So I work with, a lot with uh, photography studios, video production houses, and organizations like uh, Matchstick Productions, uh, which leads me to uh, introduce Murray. So Murray, go ahead and uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and then tell us about Matchstick Productions. Yeah, my name is Murray Weiss. Uh, my role is executive producer at Matchstick Productions. I founded the company with my business partner, Steve Winter in 1991, uh, shooting actual film and working in that space. and. We've since evolved in almost 30 years to, you know, be a fully digital company, obviously, and, and all the changes around that. Uh, Matchstick Productions currently creates our own yearly ski films and mountain bike films that we fund through advertising. We then distribute those films across North America and Europe on film tours each year. And in addition to that, we got that, you know, those personal documentary projects we also do commercial works for big, big brands, um, different short form content to long form content for brands kind of thing. Okay, awesome. And you guys are located in Colorado, correct? Yeah, we're the original uh, telecommuters. We live in a very small rural mountain town in Colorado, about 2,000 people in Crested Butte, Colorado. Okay. And, and approximately how big is your team? Our team, we have a core team that's, um, works on our projects of about 12 people with obviously a much larger freelance network as well. Gotcha. Cool. And I know you have been utilizing Synology for a while. So thank you for joining us and co-hosting with me today. Um, real quick, for those not familiar, I just want to do a brief introduction of Synology. We've been around for about 22 years and we really specialize in uh, solutions for backup and disaster recovery business continuity, virtual machine management, file server applications, and physical surveillance as well. And as Scott mentioned, uh, at the end of the pre presentation, uh, he'll raffle off um, one of our units. It's called the DS220+, Plus, which is a two-bay unit, holds two uh, drives. It's a fantastic unit for uh, a home user or a small business uh, it's compatible with all of our software packages that I'm going to discuss today. So um, make sure you stick around and uh, become eligible for that raffle. Um, to start off the presentation, I want to share a picture that Murray, you sent over to us. Um, and tell me a little bit about what we're, we're looking at here. You know, that's a typical or was a typical desk space on one of our post-production team's desk and editor's desk. And those are drives from different projects and photo shoots and a conglomeration of a few months or a year's worth of work. Okay, all right. So this is actually from your office then? Yes. Pre-Synology. Pre Pre-Synology, yep. Right, okay. So I'm curious uh, how many other photographers or video production uh, people out there have seen this before. What, from what I've heard uh, from my work here with Synology clients is this is, uh, is a very common scene in the industry. Um, 
this is what I refer to as the closet full of hard drives strategy. And, uh, or, uh, you know, you, you just basically compile all these uh, external drives with all the data on it and you put them in a, on a shelf or in a drawer. Um, and the downsides of this is, first of all, it makes it extremely difficult to collaborate when you have multiple people that need to access those files. Uh, it can become difficult to find the footage, especially uh, the more of these drives that you uh, uh, collaborate with over the years or, or accumulate over the years. And then, of course, you run the risk of losing data if you lose one of these drives. Um, you know, you lose all the data that's on that drive as well. So I know, Murray, that um, you had some of these issues in the past. And at, at some point, as you guys continue to grow and continue to collect these drives, you decided as a team that you need a more functional storage solution. Is that right? That's exactly right. We were wasting time searching through drives for footage and sharing content with clients. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so let me talk about uh, some different data storage options uh, that these organizations like Matchstick can utilize. Uh, the first one is the direct attached storage, which we just talked about. And this is just taking all that footage or all those photographs and uh, transferring them onto a direct attached device like a external hard drive. The second option is a cloud service, which is a, it's a better strategy uh, where you can take all your footage or, or all your files and transfer it to a third party cloud solution. And the benefit of this is that it, you can be, you'll be much more organized than just having a bunch of drives sitting around. Um, but the downside is, is that you do have to pay that monthly fee for that cloud space. And then if you ever need to retrieve those files that could be time consuming or can also cost additional money if there's an egress fee that that cloud service uh, charges you. So the third option that we're gonna talk about today is uh, a NAS, which is network attached storage. And we'll take a look at some of the benefits of, of that. And then also Murray will talk about how this has benefited you and, and your business. So um, for those of you that aren't familiar, let's really quickly talk about what a NAS is. And this is not to be confused with the musicians Nas or Little Nas X, if you're familiar with those guys, but Nas stands for Network Attached Storage. And basically what it is, it's a chassis or a piece of hardware that houses either hard disk drives or solid state drives. Uh, it's an easy solution for storing all your footage, folders, photographs, files, uh, all in one location, keep it organized. It's attached to your local network. Um, and then the biggest benefit is that it makes it really easy for multiple people to access the data, edit it, share it, uh, whether they're working on site or remotely. So um, by the way, uh, that unit that I was just showing you is one of our six bay units. So it'll hold up to six drives, but we have solutions that vary anywhere from one one bay, so one drive, all the way up to over, uh, I think 180 drives total. So over a petabyte worth of space. So we have solutions for any size of business or application. Um, now let me talk about some of the, the major benefits of using a Synology NAS uh, as your storage solution. Uh, the first thing we'll take a look at is your centralized storage which allows multiple people to collaborate on a certain project. So um, Murray, I know that uh, when we talked before, um, you mentioned that you had a, like I titled it a post-production uh, crunch um, before you used Synology, where you guys would go out to like the top of a mountain or something and do a uh, shoot. And then after you wrap up that shoot, you return to the office you would transfer all that data from your cameras onto the external drives. Uh, your editors would get to work and, and they would do their thing and, and do the first, uh, first edit. And then of course you had a deadline to meet um, with that first edit that uh, seemed to sneak up on you. Can, so can you elaborate a little bit more about what that process was like and some of the headaches that you had from that process pre-Synology? 
Well, I think, I think, you know, most cinematographers or photographers are totally familiar with this workflow, right? Like you're shooting, you're downloading your, your cards, you're backing them up and then you're returning to your base to kind of finish the, all the post work on the project. And that's all fine if you have like one small project, but that's just not the reality of a modern production company. You're always working on multiple things at once. So as those drives start to stack up, like in that picture, you just have an, a cluster of drives that you don't necessarily know what footage is where and, you know, different, if, if, if in the post-production workflow, things want to be handed to different editors or assistant editor, story editor, whoever it is, then it's like, oh, what drive is that? And, and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, things get messy fast and losing track of where all your stuff is at becomes a job in itself. Right, right. So it's just, uh, you pretty much have to dedicate somebody just to keep track of where all those drives are at. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So again, here is a kind of a summary of what your solution was before you come back from the shoot, you put everything on these external drives. Uh, you have multiple editors, they need to go find those drives, bring them back to their workstation, so they can edit that footage, um, then put them back onto the drives, store them somewhere. And then if you do have remote editors as well, so if they needed to access those files, you basically had to ship them a physical copy, um, you know, one of those external drives so they can get to work as well, correct? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so then let's go ahead and take a look at your current storage strategy uh, after implementing uh, Synology NAS. So now you guys have a unit there at the office. You have your local editors, uh, editor A, B, and C, who they can easily access the files on the NAS from their workstation. Uh, everything is, is organized. They just pull the files that they need and do their thing. Um, and then you simply move them back to the NAS. Right. Okay. Um, so let me real quick, I'll jump into uh, my NAS here and I'm going to switch screens and I'm assuming you guys can see this. Murray, this looks good on your end? Yeah, yep. Perfect, perfect. So this is uh, the interface when you buy a Synology unit and you hook it up to your local network it's gonna prompt you to install DSM, which is our operating system. It stands for Distation Manager. And once you do that, you'll, you'll see this desktop. So every time you log into the NAS, this is what's gonna pop up. And I just wanna walk through a couple things real quick. It's very intuitive. Um, the first thing is uh, when you uh, are getting your NAS set up, you can go to Storage Manager. And what this does is this allows you to see the disks that you have in the NAS. Um, and this one, this is my home unit here. It's a four bay unit. I currently have two drives in it. You can just click on one of those and it'll show you uh, which drive is in each slot. Um, you can also set up the storage pools and volumes from here. So once you get all that set up, you can set up a RAID configuration too, which protects you if you have multiple drives. If one of them fails, you're not gonna lose any data because that data is spread out amongst the other drives as well. Um, once that is configured on the NAS, then the second thing I wanna show you is the control panel. If you click on this, there's a lot of uh, different uh, um, utilities here. Um, it's really easy to get started. You would go into shared folders and you could just set up, uh, these are the main folders that you'll have on your NAS. So you can see these are the, the shared folders that I have on my unit. And I created one that's a B&H webinar. Uh, if you wanted to create a new shared folder, you just go to create, uh, create a shared folder, type in, um, oops, it's taking a second here. But you go ahead and type in the name and the description and you decide, uh, determine which volume or storage pool you wanna put it on. And then you go ahead and hit next and it'll create that shared folder for you. Next thing I wanna show you is that once you have those shared folders created, 
you can go ahead and add users and groups to the NAS. So you can go ahead and these are the, the users that I have uh, that I've put into this unit uh, to create a new user. You just hit create. You give them, you know, that you put in the username, uh, put in their credentials. Um, you can set up to send them a notification mail when the newly created user uh, is put into place. And then also, let me go ahead and just show you, for example, Cody here, I'm going to go in and, and edit it. Look at the, so you can take a look at the other configurations that you have here. Once the user is created, uh, you can assign uh, or add that user to a particular group if you wanted to. So if I wanted to add Cody to the photo editors group, I just add them there. Uh, you can set up permissions. So uh, it's very granular. You can give a particular user access to just uh, whatever shared folders you want to. Um, and then also you can see you can set up quota limits. Uh, you can set up permissions for different applications on the device. And then also you can set up speed limits. So um, go ahead and cancel out of there. And then also the third thing I wanna show you is just setting up a group. It's also very simple. You go to group, you hit create, uh, you give the group a name. And then once that group is created, you can choose any, any users that you already have set up. You can go ahead and add those to the group. So the benefit of um, setting up groups is that you can set up specific permissions for that group. For example, if you just have a, a group of editors and you want to make sure that the entire group has access to a certain shared folder, if you hire a new editor, you add them into that group and those permissions will automatically apply to that user. Um, the other thing I want to show you in here, one of the big things is the package center. So the beauty about Synology is that um, it's kind of like installing apps from your cell phone. You can go in, once the Synology is set up, you go into our package center and you can pick and choose the packages that you want to utilize them utilize and basically just install them onto the NAS. Uh, so you'll see here, there is a ton of packages. These are all developed by Synology. We also, if you scroll down, we have open source packages and some third party packages as well. Um, the nice thing about us is that all the packages that I'm gonna review today are included when you buy the hardware. So there is no additional cost to utilize um, these packages. All right, let me go ahead and uh, so that's kind of just a basic overview. Of course, this is just touching, uh, this is just a brief overview. Um, at the end of the presentation, uh, I'm gonna share my email address. So if you have any questions or wanna dive into this in more detail, feel free to email me and uh, I can either myself or somebody on the team can reach out to you and dive into any of these solutions in more detail. Let me go ahead and... Uh, Go back to the presentation. Okay, so on to the second uh, major benefit of working with the Synology NAS is remote sharing. Um, now, again, Murray, I know you got you mentioned that you do have some remote editors, and uh, back to this uh, configuration here. So, when you have the NAS configured at your main office, your local editors can easily uh, just log into it via the local network. Um, but if you have a, a remote editor, um, in the past, Murray, you mentioned that you'd have to physically or ship them a physical drive. Is that right? Yeah. Um, okay. Now um, that remote editor can easily uh, connect to the NAS and log into the NAS via the internet. And there's a couple ways to do that. You can set up port forwarding you can set up a VPN, or you can use a feature called our Quick Connect, uh, Quick Connect ID, where you can each individual user can create an ID and they can enter in, en enter that into a browser uh, anywhere where they have access to the internet, and it'll take them directly to the login page. So. Um, 
Murray, is this the way you guys have, you, you had it set up at one point where you would uh, have a remote editor just log in directly to the NAS, is that right? Yeah, yep. Okay, yeah. and how did that work for you? You know, it works all right, but you could, you, you know, it was, um, you, it worked good. You know, you could only download a limited amount though. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's better than shipping physical drives. Um, yeah, it's a much exactly. better solution than that. But there is a downside, as you mentioned, is that uh, if you're a remote editor and you're accessing those files on the NAS and downloading onto your workstation or, or computer, uh, you're kind of limit, limited to the speed of the internet. So for larger files like video footage or photographs, it could be very time consuming, especially if you're working with multiple files. So while that is a better solution than just shipping a physical drive, there is a better solution, which I know you guys implemented um, to be even more efficient. And yeah. what that is, is when you're working with remote editors, you have at the main office, you have the Synology NAS with all the project files that your local editors can access. But you can also install a secondary NAS at the remote office so the remote ed editor can access that as well. Um, Murray, tell us ab about when you guys implemented this, this strategy. I know you, before you had issues about uh, concerns about getting those files back from the remote editor and how was this able to simplify your, your workflow? You know, in short, the, one of the, the better things is that my post-production supervisor can communicate directly with the editor by knowing what's exactly on his drives and what kind of files that he's working with, and he can see everything there. The other cool thing, as in new shoot, prop footage comes in for shoots, we load it on our NAS here, and then it automatically backs up overnight to that remote NAS on that remote editor. So like it all happens seamlessly, but I think it's called auto sync or something like that, that uh, the Synology um, part makes it work. Um, the other really cool thing too is if that remote editor is working, he is making changes to stuff as he goes, that's automatically backed up not only to his drive, but then to our drive in the office, ensuring that we have an on-site master file backup at all times. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, so um, we do have a software called Synology Drive, which I'll show you in a little bit here, but basically what it does is it just syncs the project files from one NAS to another. So as you mentioned, Murray, if somebody adds a file at the main office, um, they can put it in a particular the dedicated uh, shared folder and it's automatically going to sync over to that remote editor's location so they have access to that file uh, you know if they do if it happens overnight they're going to have they wake up in the morning that file's already there on their local NAS so it makes it much easier for them to pull those files off and, and do their their edits on them or whatever the, else they have to do um, and then again, if that edit, once that editor does their thing, they can just put the files back on their local NAS and it's automatically going to sync back to the main location. So it, it speeds up the process. Um, so really quickly, let me show you, let me jump back into the demo unit and show you the software package. It's called Synology Drive Server. So if you go to the package center, and you just search for, I'm just gonna search for drive. You'll see the application Synology Drive Server. And I already have this installed on my NAS, but you can easily just, you can open it up and, and see the details of the package and then just click install to install it onto your NAS. And once you do that, there are a couple different features. There's actually three different icons that are gonna show up on your desktop. Um, the first one is Synology Drive, and what this is, it, it's very similar to Google Drive, where um, you can access uh, any files and folders on the NAS uh, from anywhere where you have access to the internet. Um, 
It's a good collaborating tool. You can also collaborate on projects simultaneously using this. Uh, so if I go ahead and open this up, I'll just show you what it looks like real quick. Um, it's going to show you on the left-hand side here, you'll see under my drive. So this would be if I had any personal files on there that I'm not sharing with anybody else. You also have the team folders. So these are folders that anybody on the team can access. So I have one from all my documents and then one for all my photos. And then of course you can, you have a, a tab here for files that are shared specifically with me. So if you have like, for example, Murray, if you had a file and you wanted to share it just with me, but nobody else on the team, you could just, uh, add me, uh, you know, create that link to share it with me um, and it'll end up in this folder and then files that I've shared with others uh, and then recent and you can star files and so on and so on. So it's a very effective tool. Uh, I know here at Synology, we've all been working from home for the last two years or so. So we use this all the time to access any files that we want the entire team to have access to. Um, the second feature, and this is, Murray, I know this is what you guys, this is what you're just referring to. It's called Synology Drive Share Sync. And what this does is this allows you to keep uh, two different devices synced uh, with each other. So here it's very easy to set up. Um, you just go into Start Now. You enter the domain name or the Quick Connect ID for that secondary unit, the username and password. And then let me go ahead and I will switch over to another unit here. So this is my secondary unit. This is the one that I have installed in the office. And I am actually, if I go into share sync right here, you'll be able to see that I have a, a sync in place. Um, so this is, uh, I'm actually syncing um, the, the files that I have on this NAS to the NAS that I have at home. So it's a very simple process to set up. Um, and you can also see these are, you can pick and choose the shared folders that you wanna sync. So you could set up a individual shared folder for each remote editor. Um, so, when you add stuff to that folder, it automatically goes to the NAS that they have at their location. And the third tab is just the Synology Drive admin console. Uh, so this is something that an admin would just have access to. And from here, you can see uh, the team folders. Um, you can see which ones you have enabled to sync. Uh, you can see if there's different clients that are installed. Um, and so on and so on. So that's more of a, an admin tool. All right, so the second thing I wanna mention is, is Murray, I know that you had situations all the time where you have to send a particular file to a client, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, so that would be, that's a, that's a feature. You could do that in Synology Drive, but there's also an easier way to do that where you can just send them a link so they can act, access that particular file directly from the NAS. Um, so sharing files with clients. Again, if you have, uh, for example, I know, Murray, you mentioned before that you have like a social media manager or producers and they wanna share uh, a file with a client. So what they can do is just create a sharing a link and then share that link with the client and then the client can directly access those files. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like real quick here. Okay, so back to the, the NAS I have here at home. So. If I wanted to share a file with a client, I could easily go into File Station. And what this is going to show you is it's going to show you uh, all the shared folders that you have set up on that NAS. So these are all the share folders that I created uh, earlier. Um, and then if I go into the BH webinar uh, file and open that up then I will see um, some subfolders that I created. 
So I got, you know, subfolder for project one, project two, and creating those subfolders, you can just go in here and say, create, create a new folder and set that up under the shared folder. Um, if I have an image, for example, this image right here, um, this picture that I wanna share with the client, I just simply go to that image, go to action, go to share, and then it's going to create a link which it should be creating a link. It was working just- There it is. Morning. There it is, there it is, okay. Uh, so it creates a link and then you can go ahead and just copy that link. Uh, you can configure the NAS to uh, sync with your email and just email it out directly or you can create a QR code. So if I copy that link and I send it over to the client, once they click on the link, they're gonna get a window that looks like this and it'll have the name of the file and they just simply hit the download button and download it onto their PC and they have access to that file. So it's a very simple process. Is that the way you guys do it, Murray? Yeah, I mean, this has been really a huge time saver for us because in the past, what would happen would be like a producer, a social guy or a creative director would would have to go to an editor and be like, hey, I need this clip or I need this edit or I need whatever it is. And then that editor, he might have to go find an old drive, find it, plug it in, see it, if that right content's on there and then create a link through one of those super clunky third party, you know, we transfer Dropbox, Google Drive, all that stuff and mm -hmm. create a link in that and then send it to a client. And it was, Super time consuming, super awkward, more subscriptions that you had to buy and just a giant hassle. Whereas now that same producer could be like, car company X needs to see this um, 30 second spot that we cut. So that producer goes right onto the NAS, finds that clip, creates that share link and sends it all on his own without having to talk to anyone, without having to unplug or replug a drive or, hunt anything down um and so it just it saves time and money and collaboration uh and even not only outside to your clients but among your team like my creative director and social media manager if they need to put graphics on a file they can quickly create a quick connect shared link and you know share things that way so it's it it's you know it's probably the the most used function that we use of this whole process that's really saved us time and money nice nice so you guys do a lot of sharing and thanks for bringing up quick connect because i forgot to go in and um, yeah. i just want to show everybody if you go into the control panel and go to external access then you can enable quick connect and then you just type in your quick connect id and it'll create this link so this is a link that you can use to uh, access the NAS anywhere remotely via the internet. So it's extremely simple to set up. Uh, it is a very secure uh, connection. Um, it basically, we have, a, we have a server that connects the, uh, the different locations together. And once that connection is made, uh, the data is just transferred over the internet. Yeah, it's super handy. Like I could be on the road, right? And I could be, let's say in San Francisco at a business meeting and I get an email from a client that's like, hey, can you resend me that clip or the or whatever it is? And I can just go on my you know laptop with no hard drive, log in, find that clip, create the share link, and send it right to the client and not yeah. even be, you know, and be working totally remote. So it's nice. it's pre pretty useful. Nice, nice. Yeah, you can basically do it anywhere. All right, the last part of the, the last benefit that I want to talk about is backup and recovery. So the, the, this is probably the biggest benefit of having a NAS is it's really simple to put in, a, to implement a backup and recovery strategy. Um, here's some examples of accidents or attacks that can happen. Uh, first of all, just simple accidents. Somebody accidentally deletes a file um, a hard drive gets destroyed, uh, somebody spills coffee on their computer and, and destroys it, 
Uh, you also have malicious behavior, like a ransomware attack. We have some, some solutions to protect yourself against that as well. Uh, an intentional deletion. So if you have a disgruntled employee that just wants to um, upset the business, goes in and just deletes a bunch of stuff. You don't have to worry about it if you have a backup strategy. A uh, natural disaster. So if you live in an area where and you might have a lot of tornadoes or hurricanes or floods, uh, something that the building burns down, it's always good to have a backup for that. Uh, and then of course, hardware failure. Um, at some point, you know, all hardware is going to have some type of failure. So um, we always recommend what's considered a, a three, two, one data backup rule. This is kind of a, a rule of thumb across uh, all industries as the best type of protection. And what it is, it's, it's making sure that you have at least three copies of your data and have that in at least two different kinds of media. So it could be, uh, you know, one copy on external hard drive, one on the NAS. Uh, and then the second, uh, the third part is always have an offsite copy. So that way, if something does, if there's a disaster and the server's destroyed or the entire building's destroyed, you don't have to worry. So um, let's take a look at, these are basically the offsite backup options that you have with the NAS. And the first one is just backing up or replicating that data from one NAS to another NAS offsite. Uh, and we have a really simple tool for that called snapshot replication. Um, the benefits of this is that there is no recurring cost like you have with a cloud solution. You basically just buy a secondary NAS, you put it at a secondary location, and then you replicate that data uh, from the primary NAS to the secondary NAS. Um, the second option is a cloud backup service. Of course, this is this is great because you can just back up to that that data to a third-party cloud. Uh, keeps it nice and organized. There's no you don't have to buy any additional hardware. There's no maintenance. Uh, but the downside side is depending on the amount of data that you have, it could become potentially uh, costly after a while because you have to pay those monthly fees for that space. And then a lot of uh, cloud solutions, if you ever need to retrieve that data back from the cloud, they charge an egress fee. Um, and then the third option, which we talked about at the beginning, is the external hard drives, which um, is not necessarily the best option, but any backup solution is better than no backup solution. So this would be basically just backing up uh, the, the NAS to an external drive um, or vice versa. So I know, Murray, you guys, you come back from a shoot, you back up or you uh, transfer all that data from the cameras to the external drives, and then you back it up to the NAS. So either way, it's always good to have at least two copies of that data. Um, so let me real quick, uh, I'm going to jump back into the uh, NAS here and just show you some of our backup solutions. So um, the first one that I just want to talk about, and I'm not going to really get into, let me go back to this NAS, is if I go back to the package center, um, we have a package called Active Backup for Business, which is probably our number one tool. And this allows you to back up um, all of your PCs, any physical servers, any virtual machines, um, it's this package right here. And you can back those up directly to the NAS. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter how many users you have. Um, it, it is a software that's included when you buy the hardware. So this is kind of, if you have a lot of different computers and things, this would be your first step of a backup strategy. Um, now, if you're just using the NAS as a file server, um, you know, just for storing all, all your files, then you already have all the files on the NAS, a great solution to back them up to another NAS would be our snapshot replication. And what this does is you can take a point in time snapshots of that data and you can set that up to take a snapshot um, however often you want to, uh, once a day, once every, you know, twice a day, so on and so on. You can actually go up to every five minutes, which is probably a little overkill. But what it does is it creates a snapshot of whatever shared folders you want to snapshot. And this is your number one line of protection against ransomware because it'll create versions 
So if you have a file that gets infected or damaged, you can easily roll back to a previous version and just download that version back onto the NAS. So for example, these are the shared folders on my unit. Um, you can see the ones where it says scheduled like documents. This is where I have a snapshot set up. Um, you can easily, if you want to schedule a snapshot for this shared folder, you just set, hit enable snapshot schedule and it'll give you the options as far as the, the times there. Um, you can also set up a retention policy. Where this is taking, I'm gonna switch over to this NAS, see if it's any faster. Okay, here we go. So um, let's say for the chat file, want to create snapshots, uh, I can go into settings, enable a schedule. Uh, you can do it every day, every 12 hours, eight hours, so on and so on, down to every five minutes. And then you can uh, set up a retention policy where you can set up how many snapshots you want to keep and uh, how long you want to keep those snapshots. You can also do an advanced retention policy. So set up like a grandfather, father, son, uh, backup or strategy snapshot clause. Um, and then also the advanced options, just if you're working in different time zones, you can sync those time zones. So once the snapshots are created, uh, then you can replicate those snapshots to a secondary NAS. So for example, here I have, this is the NAS at the office. I have all my active backup data and I am replicating that to my home unit. So the source server is the one in the office, uh, the des destination server is the one I have at home. So all that data is being replicated over to my secondary NAS. So that way, if the source server is destroyed for some reason, I can easily just relink to the secondary unit and be up and running within a matter of minutes. And then the last thing I want to show you is, um, if you want to back up your data to a cloud service, we have a platform called Hyper Backup, um, which is right here. And what this does is you can just create a task and choose the backup destination. So you can see we are compatible with all these different major cloud services, um, or you can choose Synology C2 Cloud Storage as our own cloud platform or you can back up all the data and NAS configurations to a secondary NAS. So the difference between snapshot replication and hyper backup is snapshot replication allows you, you're just replicating those snapshots to a secondary unit. Uh, it's just replicating all the data or hyper backup. What it does is it, it containerizes all the data and configurations and backs up that entire container to a secondary location. So that way, if your NAS is destroyed, you just have to bring that container back to um, a, a different location and then you can access the data. Okay, so that's pretty much the presentation for today. Murray, anything else that you wanna add? You know, I don't have anything specific. I think that you know, for anyone considering a system like this, it is way easier, been a great game changer for our business. And the Synology network function, like that quick connect thing and the fact that everyone can see it works really seamlessly. Like we've had zero problems with that. So um, I can honestly recommend that our experience with this product has been nothing but favorable and money well spent. Nice. Well, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, this is just, uh, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, just went over all this information briefly. So if you want to dive into any of these solutions or have any questions, feel free to email me directly. My email is there on the screen, chrisf at synology.com. Either myself or somebody on the team will get back to you. We're more than happy to uh, schedule individual consultations, demo any of our solutions, talk to you about future projects, anything you need. So um, thanks again. Uh, I think we do have some time to do some Q&A.
uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop sharing my screen, but uh, we appreciate it. We'll go from there. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, first of all, Chris and Murray for joining us. We really appreciate it. Very uh, informative and helpful. Uh, I've got a slew of questions that, that I want to ask you guys also personally, just because, uh, you know, this not just here for my good looks, but <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a consumer too. So I've, I've got some questions in the bag too. And I think there's some questions that uh, have been asked just a reminder before we do get to questions uh, after the questions portion of this, if you are in the zoom room, you are eligible for the raffle that Chris talked about in the beginning of this. Uh, so for those of you who are still on Vimeo or Facebook and you've been watching on there and you want to be entered into the raffle to win that uh, NAS storage system, Hop on into the Zoom. Uh, all that information is in there. We put it in there for you guys. It's easy to get into the Zoom um, the last two years. Hopefully you have a Zoom account by now, or you can even sign in as a guest. It's fine. Um, but but we'll take care of that after we get to the questions. Um, you know, one, one kind of question that, that came to mind while you guys were talking about this um, and, and just what I was thinking about, you know, NAS is a great solution, obviously, for storing tons of data and information and setting up a way where you can kind of keep it all stored together. But obviously, uh, you're, you're kind of limited. What's the max number of, of drives you can store in an actual NAS drive itself? Is it something where, you know, one will hold eight bays and then you can kind of daisy chain amongst that? How does that work? Yeah, so it, I mean, we have a variety of different models. It depends on if you wanted just a, a unit like the ones that the images that were in the presentation that just sits on your desktop. We also have rack mount units that you can put in a storage rack. Um, the max amount of, of drives in one, we have one that holds 16 bays, um, but we have a solution. It's part of our SA series which it's a 12 bay head unit and you can add seven expansion units that also each one has 12 units. So like you said, you just kind of link them together. So I, you know, I've seen customers that have, they'll have a full rack uh, of Synologies all linked together to create one large storage pool. Awesome. And I mean, maybe, maybe Murray, you can maybe talk about this as well uh, in your experience, Chris, I'm sure you've got a great answer for this too, but you know, Let's let's just say, for instance, you know, Murray, you're out there and you're you're shooting, you know, actual footage. Me, I'm an amateur. I, I shoot like my kids, and that's that's about it. I'm never going to make a full feature length video about them, um, unless they make me proud. Maybe maybe one day. Um, you know, what, how do you recommend once you get to that limit where you've kind of capped out and you've got nowhere else to kind of put anything? you know, how do you recommend people store their old drives? Because I'm sure people have tons of information and old drives and things like that. You, you don't just throw it in a locker or something like that or the corner of the house. How do you recommend keeping those safe so you don't lose the, the important files? Where you wanna... yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, Chris probably has the exact answer because we do use it for business, but we, you know, the, our editor who set our whole system up, Scott, he, he actually bought one of these systems for his home, right? And so then all of his music and photos and personal things that he builds, he just has a home system hooked up in his house that he keeps dumping stuff to and putting in um, more and more. And if, if that system were to fill up, all he has to do is pop out one of those drives and put in a new drive or buy another expansion unit and keep growing. And I think what's kind of cool about that is it always – enables you to have access to all of your old archival stuff. It's not just sitting on a drive that's not connected to your computer um, in a closet somewhere. So if you know that it's kind of always there and always backed up and safe. And like I said, Chris knows way more than me, but I think there's ways to do that with your phone too um, and back it up to that, you know, home Synology system. So it is quite handy for exactly what you're talking about like that, Scott. Yeah, there are ways that you can, uh, I mean, if you're taking a lot of photos with your phone, you can back up that data to the NAS as well. Um, it's for archival purposes, I mean, there's a variety of different solutions. You know, once you're, if you buy a, like a four bay NAS like I have, um, my girlfriend takes a lot of photos, so that's gonna fill up eventually. Um, but as far as archiving footage or photos that are older, um, you can either, 
you know, you could you could just send those archival files to a cloud solution um, and keep them there. Um, and that way, you know, they're still safe and you're not spending a lot of money on the cloud because the, you, you have a lot of your files still on the NAS, but you're not taking up all that space on the NAS with those old pictures. Um, you can also, you know, I know that uh, we actually, she'll back up uh, a lot of her older footage onto an external drive and then, or maybe two drives and then store them at two different locations. So that way she has two copies at two different locations. Um, or, I mean, the, the best solution is just, um, when you purchase a NAS, try to think about what is your storage gonna be like five years from now? You know, and make sure you have that room for growth in the future. Cause like, for example, the one I showed you, I, I bought a four bay NAS just to use at home. And I have two uh, eight terabyte drives in it, but I have two open slots. So I can easily just add two more drives down the road uh, when I need more storage space. So. Awesome. Now, uh, Steve's asking, uh, wants to know, does he need to use the same size and model drives? So uh, that's a great question. So if you're using multiple drives, we do recommend configuring them in a, an array configuration. Um, we do have what's called Synology uh, hybrid RAID, which will allow you to have multiple size drives. Um, and still maximize all the space in those drives and still have that rate configuration. And what that means is that, let's say you have three drives or four drives on the unit, one of those drives fails, you can easily take it out and install a new one because there's that parity um, and all that data scattered out amongst the other three drives and it'll just reconfigure onto that new drive. So you won't lose any data. Um, if you're getting into a larger unit, like a lot of the businesses that have like a 12 bay unit, we always recommend using the same size drive because you want to use a, a RAID 5, which will protect you against one drive failing, or RAID 6, which protects you against two drives failing simultaneously. Um, but you don't want to use the Synology hybrid RAID because if you, if the more drives that you have, um, to try to use that with Synology Hybrid RAID, it's going to decrease the performance of your unit. So it's more designed for our smaller desktop units if it's like a four bay or so, you know, if you're a small business or home user and you just have some random drives laying around, you can put them in there and you can, you can um, use that RAID, uh, Synology Hybrid RAID solution and still maximize the storage space. And, and if you don't wanna have any rate configuration, then yes, you can use different sizes of drives. Um, another thing I do wanna mention though, is that you wanna make sure that you pick the drives off of our compatibility list. So if you go to our website on each unit, there's a compatibility list and those are all drives that we've tested and approved for that particular unit. Got it, got it. Now, uh, we've got another question over here from JE. Uh, wants to know for dealing with large video files like 4K, uh, sometimes even with the one gigabit Ethernet transfers can take some time for him. Are there ways to speed that up? Uh, yeah, so we do have units that have built in 10 gig network ports. Um, or you can, if you have a, a unit that has multiple one gig ports, you can bond those together. For example, mine, I have two one gig ports bonded. So it creates a two gig connection. Um, of course, you know, the network speed is always gonna be dependent on what your local network is. So uh, if you have a 10 gig network port, but your local network is smaller than that, then you're gonna be limited to that smaller amount, but yes. I, you know, I have some, there's a, a client here in uh, Seattle called Run Studios, and they have two racks full Synology units, and they have it configured to a 40 gig uh, network speed in their local network. So they have plenty of network speed. So that is a possibility. Wonderful. Now, uh, out of curiosity, if I want to edit video or even just photos directly off the NAS itself, am I able to do that? You can do that. That's something where you want to make sure you reach out to us uh, for a consultation to make sure you're purchasing a unit that is powerful enough. Uh, that would be one of our uh, more powerful units. And 
uh, we would just need to know how many editors are going to be editing simultaneously. Um, and we could pick a unit that has a, a powerful CPU. And then also you probably want to maxim out, maximize the RAM in the unit. And then also make sure that you have a good, uh, a powerful internet speed as well. But yes, definitely. Got it. Wonderful. Which I think leads into our last question that we have over here talking about users and capabilities. Is there a limit to the number of accounts that can use, uh, you know, that, that system? Um, no, there's not. There's, I, I mean, there, it depends on what you're doing, I guess. Um, if you're editing off the unit, you know, there's probably a limit of, the number of people that can edit simultaneously, um, but that limit is, I think, 50 plus, or maybe even more for our larger, powerful units. Um, so there's a spec sheet on. If you go to the product page for each one of our units on our website, you'll see a spec sheet that will give you all that information. And again, if you have a particular situation, email me. And we can have that discussion and, and for a specific uh, use case. Awesome, wonderful. Uh, Murray, I know you said, uh, you know, obviously if, if you wanna shout out the production house again that you uh, are the executive producer for, that would be great where people can follow you, find you, social yeah. media, websites, all that good information. Yeah, it's Matchstick Productions is the name of my company and we're on Instagram at, at, at MSP Films. And probably one of our most successful films that I'd recommend is a film called McConkey. You can check it out. It's on all, all platforms right now. And uh, thanks for having me today, Scott. No, absolute, absolute pleasure. Uh, Chris, is, is, is the email the best way to, to find you? Do you, do you are, are you an Instagrammer? Do you, do you have anything going on? Or are you just, uh, you're just really into the, to the NAS storage? <laughs> uh yeah i i do have an instagram but i don't even know what my instagram uh, <laughs> idea is at this point i don't use it that often but definitely uh if you have any questions email me at chris c-h-r-i-s-f at synology.com and i'm happy to assist awesome wonderful well chris murray really absolute pleasure having you guys here we really appreciate it uh do want to thank as always synology for sponsoring this event uh without them we wouldn't be able to host wonderful events like this or even do raffles so uh if you like them reach out to them let them know keep uh keep coming back and bring back this good stuff uh for everybody out there we appreciate you joining as well but that's all we have for today this has been another edition of the bnh virtual event space we'll catch you next time